right then folks, you catch me in my Mark III Ford Capri, I like to call Cat, and I'm making my way down to go and meet my brother and his MV6 powered Reliance Scimitar. First up, if it's something that you're interested in getting involved with, then please do drop me an email. I'll pop it in the description below. And just drop me an email, send me a couple of pictures, let me know what your project's about. Around about the southwest, Midlands is doable, um, but if it's any further afield than that, it might take a little bit of organising, but I'll try and get around to it over the winter at some stage. So yeah, drop me an email if it's something you're interested in doing. Anyway, on to the day. This is Lawrence's car, and he's had it since a couple of years before I bought my first Capri. He's done so much stuff to it, underneath, engine bay, inside, loads of different changes and then he's adapted it as well as he's gone on. So there's loads of stuff to talk about in this episode. So on to Reliant then, they started up a UK car company around about the late 30s I believe, early 40s, something like that. They quite like their fiberglass shell stuff, the same as Bond and Gilburn was a Welsh company, did the same thing. Um, so there's a couple of them around at the time. And most famously, obviously, they made the Robin and the Regal, uh, a couple of others. One of those was the van from Only Falls and Horses, which also had a Capri, but I won't bore you about that now. They also made the Reliance Scimitar and Sabre. There's a couple of different versions of this throughout the years that they made them, but it's kind of chalk and cheese between the three wheelers, the small cars and these big ones. It started out with a bit of a coupe shape with the SE4, the Scimitar, um, and it moved on to SE5 where they did coupe and uh, the GTE, which is what Lawrence has got. But here's the SE6 where they did a convertible version as well. One of those Princess Anne had, I don't know which one it is. In fact, Lawrence will probably tell us, and he's a Scimitar owner. Lawrence has done absolutely loads to his cars, underneath, inside, out, rust proofing, engine, all sorts, and he's managed to continue to adapt and change it over the last few years. So hopefully we'll get to have a real good look around, get loads of pictures, explanation of what it is. I'll also chuck in a few clips, which I managed to get from the Kerbera track day of his car. It is absolute bulletproof little machine. Come on, Volvo. So I'm gonna continue heading over towards Bristol. I'll catch up with you when we get there. We will say hello to Lawrence and what I'm calling the beast. I mentioned already about uh, the fact that I kind of grew up with the car. Um, that's the reason why I've semi-named it because Lawrence isn't sad enough to name the car. So I'm calling this video Cat Meets the Beast. Because <laughs> it is a beast. It is a beast. Maybe. This is the car and this is the man behind it. Um, so start us off. this car because I like the look of it and I knew I could alter everything else to get it if I wanted uh, but the look you, you can't like, well, well, I don't have the skill set to do anything like that so yeah yeah, yeah. but you saw this next to not this particular one but similar to near um, our parents house when we were really younger than yeah. it was what, what, I was nine years old and I as I looked across I think my dad might know what it was so he, he told me what it was and, uh, yeah it was within about a mile so I cycled back and looked at it later <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I loved it I just loved the shape of it to me um, Just had the same width as the car, so I put that on. I thought, like, okay. Yeah, yeah. 
What about the wheels? The wheels are really, they were hard to find like 10 years ago. They're impossible now. They're off a of Caterham. They're a Caterham Special Edition HPC, it was called. They're a five spoke 16 inch alloy, which I just like the look of. I'm, I'm a five spoke guy. And they, uh, yeah, I like them. They work really well, they look great. Isn't it? I, I keep looking because I love another set of thing or something. But you can't find them. It's a fiberglass body on a mild steel ladder style chassis, isn't it? Is that right? So you did like very little to the chassis, but you had to do the outriggers, is that right? Yeah, the outriggers are all rusted, rusted to hell, so I took the body off. It was part of the whole project. It went on for four years, actually, didn't it? And then, uh, yeah, I replaced the outriggers with stainless steel, so they, they went rusted again. Um, but other than that, there was, it was it. pretty it's, clean it's the chassis wise. Yeah, the chassis is great. They're yeah. all good, the Simitas. The outriggers disappear completely, but the rest of the chassis, they, they last years and years and years. Yeah. Yeah, this, this was no different. Yeah. Right, let's um, let's jump in. We'll go for a little bit of a swing in the beast and have a little talk about the suspension and brakes or upgrade and setup. through the part spins of what's available to you until you find something which works. So, so it's got Mondeo front calipers which are not at all exotic and Rover 827 discs and then on the back it's Sierra Cosworth uh, discs and pads, both vented front and back Yeah. Uh, discs and pads with yellow stuff pads. I find them to be fantastic. They're nice and strong when they're cold and you feel them get marginally stronger when you warm them up. So, yeah I've got uh, yellow stuff on the Capri. They're, 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 they're good pads. They're very good, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is what you helped me do with the Capri. Yeah, you, to a, a lot certain of work extent. On Capri and it worked, didn't it work well? Yeah, it worked it really well. So, having a chat about the interior very briefly. It's just stripped out. I just wanted it light. It was all really. It's nice to have a bit of noise and uh, you know feel feel what's going on. So, so we've got a proper um, a proper like semi track prepped really in terms of roll cage. He's got the five point harness for the driver's seat. Horrible pain in the ass. <laughs> this is an MR2, right. MR2 Mark II, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Seats, and he's got one for the front, which he puts in normally. But because we've been on the track day, he's got this Cobra bucket seat, which he uses for that for that purpose. And then everything else is literally just stripped out. Windows, door handle. This is how you've let down the windows. <laughs> Mess tin for you. It's got my car keys in at the moment. So that leads us on very nicely. So having a little bit of a chat about the engine, we thought we'd just have a stop here now and, uh, and have a open the bonnet um, and have a little look what's in there. The so what engine did the Scimitar come with? It comes with an Essex engine, a Ford Essex engine, it's a V6, 3 litre, um, I think it was touristic, it's kind of almost diesel-y and it would still rev a bit, 5.5 to 6,000, Yeah. certainly more than a diesel anyway. 
um, and it would keep that torque you know all the way up it was a nice engine but uh, it was it just wasn't powerful really yeah it just wasn't powerful you know what was, were they rated at at the factory they said, i think it was 135 or 138 depending where you read it and uh, typically they'd be under 120 in, in reality yeah yeah they were quite uh, renowned for under <laughs> under, re- underperforming, underperforming yeah. weren't they? Yeah. but the essex v6 yeah. is what um pete's now got in the capri so we got we had a couple oh, of clips yeah. of that in the previous video just um, it off too much no he's doing <laughs> something it, different it though he's he's, it he's is, racing so. it in a, in a series that yeah, needs that he, engine he's the mix, so. out of it and, things, yeah. this, and this, he's got this, a super engine in his other capri so we, we, we won't hold it against you pete yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Lame>. so lame <laughs> it's no v6 is it? no v6 so then you whipped it off the road and you fancied a little more power yeah. so what drove you towards the mv6 well, I omega for, engine for many years i had no money and lots of time uh, when i was at uni to study these things and figure out which engine i was going to use so i looked at all the all the options the BOB and the BOA, very good options, but um, yeah, yeah. you're just fanning around a bit with gearboxes. There's some good options for it, but it's definitely more work than what we've got here. The little bits and pieces I did to it, it's, it's really making a lot more power than the BOA or the BOB, uh, maybe with similar work. Uh, yeah. That's something I haven't said yet on this video. The, the drive for me behind this car was to make it look nice, but make it fast and tough. I wanted it reliable, really reliable. I want to be able to thrash the thing around and not worry about it. That, that was a really big drive for me. So yeah, yeah. I, I didn't necessarily want to tune the Essex up to within an inch of its life because, you know, I'd, I'd be worrying about it all the time. But genuine, like, genuine chat that my, me and Lawrence have quite often about the engine transplant for the Capri. You are aspiring is to have a fairly good power out of the standard engine because yeah. the, the closer to standard it is, the, the, less it's the more reliable it's going <laughs> to yeah, be. It's yeah, it's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah. So this is tuned a bit, but I, I did plan on supercharging it, but I've, I've been that idea now because the car, to me, seems quite well balanced. The brakes and the handling and the engine will suit each other very well. Yeah, yeah. And to stick another 150 horsepower on it, it would start an entire new project. I'd need a new clutch, new gearbox, new probably back axle, upgrade the brakes again. Because you've got um, quaif a quaif diff in there, haven't you? Differential, yeah, yeah. And an automatic torque bias one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is a peach, a lovely thing. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, and the other thing with these engines that we talk about quite often is the gearboxes is one of the biggest issues. But this came in a rear-wheel drive yeah, it's a function rear-wheel drive with a manual gearbox, yeah, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. So there's some um, down in here, you can't see it, but there's the radiator. In front of the radiator are two large cone filters, so it's a nice cold air feed straight into the throttle body. There's, um, I've enlarged the throttle body as big as it can go, so this the wall thickness here is pretty thin. And then I made two new butterflies to fit in there, so I think I've got an 11% increase in, in cross-section area there. Matched the inlet manifold plenum there to the runners and then ported the cylinder head and made the exhaust manifolds with one and a half inch uh, down to 27 inch primary pipes, which are tuned for I think 6,700 RPM on this particular engine. Nice. So that lot there took it from 210 horsepower. Obviously, I've, I've been the catalytic converter, the backward air injection, the log manifolds, and so on, and something of a convoluted inlet air routing. That's it, otherwise, otherwise it's a standard engine. I took it from 210 horsepower to, I'm not certain, but somewhere between 260 and 290 uh, horsepower, because that's, that's the two awesome, figures I got on the rolling roads I've used. Yeah. So you got 260 is your lowest figure yeah, you've got on rolling roads? Yeah, 262 was, was one, that's where we had it mapped, and he, he said, look, don't take this power figure as gospel, because it's, it's just a, a tuning tool, and I don't know how accurate the rolling road is. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Pete's, uh, he, he's the chap with the Capri, on the Project Heaven rolling road it made 290. And again, <laughs> we're not certain how accurate the, the rolling yeah, road yeah. is, but... So but somewhere between I mean, 250 take, take worst case scenario and you've added 50 yeah. horsepower with yeah just, just put it around, really. yeah, yeah yeah it's awesome and i think um like I've, I've said it probably way too much on this channel already because it's supposed to be about capris but it like just the 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 balance that lawrence is talking about in terms of the power handling braking and stuff is just like unquestionable and going on a track day like Kerber we did the other day and hopefully i'll be popping up clips as, as i'm talking um it just it shows just how how good the car is uh, in terms of reliability but also in terms of fun and, and having it out on the track and you drive it there you thrash it around for eight hours straight and then you it's, drive it home it's it's fluky or something it just keeps going <laughs> <laughs> that's the sort of car we like going. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely beautiful straight right there where we National might just get a, a couple of nice shots of the car going around 30 miles an hour um, but definitely no more than 60. Then we'll jump back in the car and go and see Cat.
Alrighty then folks, that is Loz L and his MV6 powered Reliance Scimitar I nicknamed The Beast. Uh, it's been a grand day out having a little look over the uh, the car, ins, outs, under the bonnets, bit of a drive, um, a few clips of Kerber as well. Um, and it's been absolutely wicked to catch up and actually film this video because I said it's my third attempt now. <laughs> but we made it! Yeah! Yeah, we finally did it. <laughs> Hopefully over the coming months there'll be a couple more meetups with Lawrence. Um, out driving and stuff so hopefully that's gonna that's gonna match up as I said before I'm trying to make this a bit of a new series for my channel cat meets other classic car owners um, I've look like we've seen Natalie we've seen the beast and it'd be great to see if anyone else out there fancies doing this I've got a couple more already um, lined up for September so um, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on those episodes as they come out uh, and let me know what you think in the comments below Links in the description for Loz L's channel. Again, lots of garage tinkering stuff. A little bit more in depth than myself. At the moment, he's working on a Series 3 Land Rover, which is absolutely awesome to see. So that's it for now, guys. You take it easy and drive safe.